So, a little bit about Archana. Archana uh, is the head of data analytics and data engineering and data science at Eventbrite. Uh, she's been there for almost a year, uh, spent a lot of time at Splunk before, uh, knows data in and out, uh, and she's a little bit upset with us for not using Eventbrite for this event. Uh, you cannot please everyone, you cannot please everyone. Uh, <laughs> thanks for keeping your smile on, even though I disappointed you. Well, will you promise me that next time around you're, you're going to use I don't know, talk to Mark, I think, about that. They disqualified us for being a startup. <laughs> So, Archana, uh, tell us about what you came to do at Eventbrite. Yeah, so I, I joined the Brightland, as we call it, uh, about 10 months ago to lead all things data. Um, essentially, what this means is, you know, traditionally we have data engineering and the data science sitting somewhere else and analysts sprinkled all across the board uh, in functional uh, business units. and. Eventbrite came to the realization we need to bring all of these different roles and functions under one big umbrella so we can think through this end to end and um, share context as much as possible and solve for data problems and look for data opportunities more holistically so we can leverage the scale of all the, the rich treasure trove that we're sitting on. Which is why Arshna has one of the best, I think, the titles on LinkedIn, which is Head of Data Analytics backslash engineering backslash science uh, head of Eventbrite. <laughs> we need to come up with a new name that can do an umbrella term for all this. <laughs> it's all data. <laughs> it's all data. So but maybe before we go back to Eventbrite, actually, you know, spent quite a time at, at Slack. What did you learn, you know, at that career at Slack, in doing a variety of data positions that sort of you feel led you to this Days of being ready to take on this new challenge? Yeah, that's a very good question. And I think if I reflect back, um, the journey actually started much before I even joined Splunk. So during undergrad and grad uh, school at Berkeley, um, basically a lot of the research I was engaged in was constantly centered around data. Uh, this was before big data was a thing or, or data science was even kind of a formally recognized uh, profession, so to speak. So um, really it came down to how do we take advantage of traditional computer science you know, systems, uh, research, and technology out there to allow us to um, scale up insights and, and get people value from everything that we're accumulating uh, you know, all shapes and sizes and forms of data, and then, you know, scale up compute, scale up uh, storage, and uh, make it just easier to drive consumption. So that was kind of the, the back story. Um, straight out of grad school, I thought, if I don't join a startup now, I'll probably never go back to it. Um, <laughs> so I joined this, this, you know, late stage startup that was then, you know, uh, around 200 people at Splunk. I was part of the core engineering team, building some of the platform capabilities um, to leverage the data that was being ingested, stored, and uh, uh, queried in Splunk. A few years in, I realized, you know, maybe we're not solving for the biggest pain points for our customers, so I actually moved to the field to understand where the true pain points are um, for customers that were trying to use Splunk at the time. And a lot of it came down to people and process gaps, but also, you know, some nice to have, again, to drive self-service insights from the platform. So, long story short, soon after I realized we should be drinking our own champagne, just like Slack uses Slack a lot, you know, back in the day. Um, why, why shouldn't we use Splunk for our internal uh, insights? And so I built up the data and insights team advocated for uh, heavy investments to instrument our product, collect even more data, and then triangulate it with you know, instrumenting our processes to, to enrich uh, the context there to drive business value. So um, after a, a good chunk of time, so 11 years later, it, it was time for a change, right? And pandemic was a 
forcing function to want and crave that it next chapter. It was a chapter. great excuse. <laughs> it was a great excuse. Well, and also just partly reflecting on, you know, where are the gaps in my own journey here? And I got really thinking about true scale of impact from data. I need exposure to something that's a bit more consumer rather than enterprise -y. And hence, Eventbrite um, and the mission here is to connect the world together um, through live experiences and what better North Star for really leaning in on data to bring that to reality. So I know you know uh, at Eventbrite there's a big modernization process not happening through the data stack. So tell us a bit about you know what's in place. Do you get in? How does the data stack or environment look like? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, a bit of history here, I mean, Eventbrite started primarily thinking about ticketing, right? So the data stack as well was designed primarily for ticketing and transaction management and reconciling our books and uh, those kinds of use cases. Over time, as, as the demand for insights and analytics grew, there was a lot of duct tape that was fit on top. So, you know, early stages, everything, threw it all in a MySQL database, right? And then slowly you see, okay, maybe we need, you know, some some nicer pipelines here and there. So Spark on EMR um, was primarily used for compute, and the query engine is Presto. Um, storage, all our data uh, moving around to S3, HDFS, a lot of the metadata over time uh, sat on Hive. Um, and then Tableau was used for dashboarding, Luigi for orchestration. So a lot of uh, um, technology that, that was right at the time, decisions that were right at the time, but if we really think about uh, future-proofing the infrastructure, this is not the stack that, that will get us to the future state. Uh, so. That's, that's where we're at right now, thinking about modernizing it. So, so what do you think you know, was sort of the tipping point or that moment of realization that, hey, it's time to reconsider uh, a change? To he joined. A change. He joined. That's, <laughs> that's, that's as simple as that. That's, that's part of it. But frankly, I think a lot of that uh, demand also came from bringing data science and analytics under the same umbrella as data engineering and saying, hey, here's what we're trying to do, and here's where the current infrastructure is not meeting our needs, right? So if you think about it, there's reporting, there's ad hoc analytics, and then there's really driving some of the insights from the data back into the product, data-powered product functionality, whether it's even simple heuristics or, or fancy machine learning models, there's, you know, requirements change for what needs to, to happen end-to-end -to, -end to make that a reality and make it a good experience for our customers as well. So I think that was the forcing function. Um, and as part of that, we, we just you know, took a clean slate to say, OK, if we were to design this from the ground up, what do we need to solve for? Um, some of the pain points are really this, like stuck in this chicken and egg loop of our platform is kind of keeling over, so we can't support some of these use cases and scenarios, so hold off. But then, you know, in the process of, of ripping off some duct tape and adding more stuff, you're still stuck in legacy and you know more things that, that you know snowball and cascade and any incident or, or uh, um, bug on the product side that impacts data quality, for instance, now becomes the data team's problem also to stop you know undo, redo, replay, and it's you know days of cycle time to get back to a clean slate state, right? So I think all of those all, you know, just, it's a domino effect um, that happened together. And to your point, me joining was a, a good uh, checkpoint uh, to say, okay, you know what? Let's figure out where we need to go. So how, uh, tell us a bit, how do you go about that? So, you know, globalization, there's a big stack to support. Yeah. And then there's a huge journey to ahead of us. How do you manage that? How many people are assigned to a new project? Are the same people working on the legacy stack? Is there a big migration plan? Is there a big duplication of all of things plans? Just yeah, that, that's a very good question. I, I, I don't, um, I, I'm under no false uh, misconception that I have all the answers, but I can share what, what I've done, I guess. Uh, so first step really when I joined was 
listen, right? Get a better understanding of what people want to do, um, where they're getting stuck or where the challenges are, where their blockers are today. And then figure out how much of this is, is a, a fundamental infrastructure technology problem, how much of it is a process issue, how much of it is just like knowledge and awareness. Like, do, you know, do people even know this is the place to start and there is a rich set of data and dashboards that they can leverage already and is there an access problem? Really just going through and figuring out where all the current challenges are. And then that just turns into the requirements for what we need to build. So uh, based on that, the first thing we, we realized was, you know, we need to modernize our, our cloud data warehouse. That's, that's one decision we need to, to make. We also need to make it much easier to instrument and, and collect richer data at the right granularity and this is you know, upstream of data, back to the dev teams to say, hey, this is the information that's missing that people need for what they're trying to do with the data. So almost kind of teasing apart data producers' requirements and constraints and data consumers' requirements and constraints. And then on, on you know, my team's plate is how do we build that platform that simultaneously solves both. So switching from XML to JSON is really <laughs> No comment. Long term, long term, that's long term. Um, and so you managed the part of your, you know, the story, you know, putting this under one sort of, mm -hmm. the various teams. So it's a bit about that. So so what happened then essentially? I mean, there, is there still data science and the use, still engineering, so yeah. how does it change? Yeah, I think the key is really more communication, more shared context, and shared aligned goals. Um, that matters a lot, right? Um, if you think about it, uh, if incentives don't align, there's really no benefit to solving for something truly end to end. So that's, that's the first step, to say you know, our biggest goal, North Star, here internally is to enable all Brightlings, so everyone internal to Eventbrite, to have access to the data they need to do their day jobs, give them, arm them with the insights they need to run their own, you know, part of the business, and uh, make sure we're we're that bridge between the data producers and data consumers. So, getting folks to talk to each other, put themselves in each other's shoes, and empathize with the challenges or, or kind of what are what are each functions trying to optimize for. Um, and building that awareness went a long way because there was a lot of realization that wasn't happening around, here's where I'm getting stuck. I didn't realize that you know it's not a platform limitation. I just didn't know that this was the best way to do it. Right? So encouraging that dialogue. And uh, so you know, now that there's more progress that has been made in the new stuff, the new stack, what do you know for sure? You know, won't survive. What are you getting? What are you getting rid of? Um, I, I think top of my list is probably Luigi. <laughs> Frankly, uh, well, um, it's a shame because everybody likes the name. It's a cool name. I must say, I, I associate it with Mario Brothers, oh, right? Of and, and pizza. Uh, so, who doesn't love pizza? So Luigi's gone. What else? Um, I think next would, would really just be. Um, figuring out how we move <laughs> folks from having to uh, build pipelines in Spark to, to just up-leveling that, so DBT um, as much as possible. And uh, some of the, the bad behaviors that were kind of workarounds uh, to the, the old stack where um, folks are leveraging Presto as a way to, to kind of shortcut some of the pipeline building, which not the right thing to do longer term. So. That's another thing, really doubling down on DBT is kind of on the radar. What are some typical how, how do you do that? How do you like, because you have a team that writes Scala and, 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 and you know, build some engineer stuff, and then you can't switch to DBT, and, and it's such a different universe, different skill set, different people. How do you manage that transition with the team so that nobody gets freaked out too early? Yeah, actually, I would almost turn that around to say, like, I think historically we were trying to force people that were not comfortable doing some of those things to use those tools that were outside their comfort zone. Now we're just saying, you know, 
we have the foundations to make it easier for you to do the thing that you have to do. So just double clicking on that a bit, we have a data platform infrastructure engineering team and an analytics engineering team. So, you know, analytics engineering should just double down focusing on driving consumption and, and build those gold layer data marks that make everything easier downstream. Um, but that wasn't necessarily where all their time was spent historically, just by nature of the, the tool, set and, uh, tool set that we were using. So I think it's actually, they welcome the change and they're eager to modernize and learn um, the things that will make their lives easier. Uh, what's your outlook for on the BI side? So, you know, the, the reports, the dashboards, will all of them have to be remade? Are people worried about that? Is there a big... Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good Nobody's question. Nobody's worried, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay for right now. But I know that there are better tools out there that we need to, to lean into. I know Apun mentioned Looker was one that they use. Um, there are others as well that are much easier. So I, I almost think about, there's not going to be a one size fits all. So maybe I need to do the same exercise around like, what is the preferred interface that each of our data consumers have? So some cases they want dashboards. Sometimes they just want the hand holding. Like this is the thing you should focus on, and you know I will give you that full service analytics experience to hand hold you through insights from the data and how that should uh, drive your decision. Right. The third flavor I would say um, there are tools that people are already using, and they just want data fed into the tools that they're comfortable with. Um, for instance, sales prefers you know, CRM tools that they're already using, so the more we can push things automatically into the interfaces they're comfortable with, that's going to matter. Um, so That's going to be painful. <laughs> well, so everything is painful, but everything is also kind of like, if we p take it apart into a piecemeal thing that, that we're solving for each pain point, then we will see some things that we can generalize into patterns and solve for, and you know, maybe that's bringing in a third party tool. In other cases, they already have what they need in terms of the interface. Now it's just you know, how, how do you route things to the right people in the right way? What's one thing that sort of so far you're super happy with sort of a specific pain that is already solved for that the business is happy about? Um, I think they just, just love the partnership with the data team and really being able to lean in on like, tell me more proactively how I should be thinking more data and, and really working through with you know end to end from um, what should I collect if these are the metrics that I'm solving for and optimizing for and bringing in some of that end to end thinking. Um, it's almost like uh, being a, a consultant in many ways, right? And, and kind of having more of the analysts like channel the inner, channel the inner consultant um, in the way they approach solving for the internal stakeholders. I miss the days when you just guesstimated stuff and use intuition, <laughs> gut feeling, and now you're freaked out about you know following the wrong API. Makes sense. Life is getting more complex when data is <laughs> Migration stories. Everybody, you know, some people here probably think, ah, you know, I want a modern data stack. I don't know, should care about it. One thing's for sure: the modern data stack, only modern for a while. So migration stories always more, more important than, than we think. Um, questions from the crowd. Yeah. Actually, consume your data event right for launching events, and also after helping build live streams, actually use it for like music stuff. What's actually pretty interesting, I'll start the Google over so an actual Google custom search guy. You have text, you have descriptive tags. You can use a tool like Neo4j and then pipeline it into their warehouse. And because you can let people rank the term that maps back to the event they like more, unlike Meetup, you let people say, I follow this, and they get notifications. So you have a feedback loop, not just for your internal consumers, but for your external users and event holders, where you can wait what terms really map to the events people want to sign up for, register for, pay for, and convert again later and re-register. That's the area where if we just literally let them follow tags better, 
And Neil from Jay's got a really good tool to go into a, a data store like this. It's super fast, it's text based. And then out of that, you could let people get more discovery earlier events, which you could have higher conversion. Because you do free email for people. So, I mean, literally, they probably pay for the marketing part. I know that people like, if they're kids, they can't pay for you inside of it to market their events. Better. We'll talk offline. Hire him. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm eager to hear more, but I also want to plan. I don't know if you've looked into our uh, new marketing tools uh, suite, but highly encourage us. I downloaded the new event right app, but I was like, eh, it's painful enough to use the old app, so I didn't look at it. Okay, well, we'll chat offline, but, but certainly something that we are solving for, and uh, yeah. we'll the make it happen. The web version is actually more useful for me as a web version, but we'll definitely talk about it. Now I'll look at it. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead over there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, what was the final nail in the coffin for Luigi, and why do you think that there's any escape, any escape from the pen? Um, I wouldn't say it's the final nail in the coffin because we, we still haven't done that migration okay. successfully. There are multiple coffins here. Yes, multiple coffins, but. Um, Multiple opportunities to be born again. How about that? <laughs> um, but it, it really comes down to um, just the daisy chaining of uh, pipelines and the capabilities around automating that better. Um, and, and that's where I think uh, Airflow, frankly, has, has uh, done leaps and bounds better in that user interface. I have a, uh, another question based on that. How much do you feel, you know, data engineers in general prefer working on the latest, most interesting best? Do you feel the team's actually excited with that, you know, let's modernize, or, uh, you know what, I'm more concerned that we keep doing what I do? Yeah, I, I, that's a very good question, and I've been doing a lot of thinking about that, right? I would say it's a 50-50 split. Um, there are folks that are just in their comfort zone with the tools they've been using, and, and you know I know folks who have gone from one role to another who just want to follow the stack that they feel happiest about or, or feel like they are most knowledgeable about. Um, then there's other folks, at least uh, right now, the data engineering team at Eventbrite, they're super pumped to just rip off all things legacy and just modernize and it actually makes their lives easier day to day, right? And and some of the, the more modern capabilities uh, around like scaling up and scaling down to zero um, and you know the, the cost benefits of that, the performance benefits of that and uh, um, you know checkpoint rollback recovery, those kinds of capabilities are, are you know um, people have lost sleep <laughs> over not having those so that's where a lot of that excitement comes from and uh, push for, yeah, let's do this as quickly as possible. Awesome. I give it up for Arshana.